The Miss Universe 2016 pageant will finally begin in a few days where we would witness the world's most beautiful women conquer the Miss Universe stage. But more than the glitz and glam, these girls will also carry their stories with them that could change the world. One very special lady in particular is Sierra Leone's very first representative to the Miss Universe pageant and she is none other than Hawa Kamara. Welcome to the Philippines. Thank you. And Thank hello, you. Gia Lasana. Uh, nice to see you finally up close. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited for this interview because I'm so excited to hear the stories. How, uh, can you tell us about the pageant scene in Sierra Leone with you being the first ever representative of Sierra Leone to Miss Universe? What is that like? Well, firstly, this is such a blessing, like a very big blessing because we had several pageant girls there in Sierra Leone. We competed um, a huge number. We wanted to come here. And finally, I was chosen, so it's a blessing. And yeah, there's a lot of excitement in the whole country because of this. We've never had this opportunity before to get to be a part of the Miss Universe. Yeah, so do you, how are the fans there? Like, are they crazy fans like the Filipinos? Crazy is the right word? Yeah, they, crazy good. <laughs> they are super crazy. Yeah. yeah. What are your fans like? That Like, how do they treat you? Do you have stories to tell us? Like, Of course, special. <laughs> <laughs> you know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're, they're very lovely, they're very supportive. They're all about, now if you check my Facebook page, they're all over the place. They want to know what's going on, like, oh, what's up with that queen? How is it going over there? You know, asking me questions about the Philippines. Yeah. You know? And of course, I keep telling them how well you guys are. Mm, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for that compliment. Mm. And then can you tell us the story of how your national director finally thought of staging and buying the franchise of Miss Universe. Well, according to what she said to me, she said she's been trying for over six years mm -hmm. trying to get Miss Universe to Sierra Leone. You know, it was a uh, kind of it was very hard for her. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, it was our dream. Mm -hmm. and she dreamt about it. I had my own dream of coming to Miss Universe one day, but then we didn't have the franchise. But all the time, I was following on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched the one with um, even Pia. Yeah. Yes. The time I watched Piers, the franchise was not in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'll be like, I want to come to this competition. How do I come? So this is an opportunity that made me realize that dreams do come true. Because I have been following Miss Universe for a very long time. The one with Casey, you know, different ones. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite beauty queen so far in Miss Universe? <laughs> Piers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> She just looks so humble. She is very sweet. You understand? You know, when I watched that competition, I was like, she needs to win, and you know what's happening, and blah, blah, blah. And finally, I called my brother, you need to come and see. You need to come and see Filipino. Because Sierra Leoneans who are fan of Philippines, your movies are selling a lot in my country. Oh, really? Yes. Well, we didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should tap into their market. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They sell it. Well, we all know that Miss Universe is an international stage for your voice to be heard and currently Pia Wordsback is really advocating for HIV awareness. What are you going to be advocating for? Well, my, I am more into women's empowerment Yeah, because I have a very, I have a long story. Yeah, that's like growing up with a single mom, yeah, trying to chase my dream. My mom was very supportive and that is one of the main reasons I'm here today, yeah, because when I said I wanted to model, she said, yes, that's very good, give me all of the support I need. And so I am more like, it doesn't matter your situation, your kind of upbringing, you can get to wherever you want to go. Yeah, you can, like, if you want to become a model, you want to become a supermodel, an international model, just chase your dreams. So I want to encourage every woman to be very strong and not give up. That's more like what I'm after, yeah. How about you sound and like you're yeah. yeah. You sound like you're coming from somewhere, from some experience. Can you tell us about that? Like how do women fight for their dreams back in Sierra Leone? It is very hard, you know. Now I come from a country where people just think the men are super. You understand? So you have to be super strong again to beat that. Yeah. 
I hope you know where I'm coming from. I do. Yeah. You have to believe yourself. You have to like go against society's norm. Not more like going against in a violent way. But then you, know, you have to make them understand you have a choice. Because like you you see somewhere that you want to go. So it's more like that in my country. So my upbringing wasn't quite very beautiful. I was happy, you know, because as a child, I'm just gonna be. You know, Accepted of whatever comes. Yeah. But then it wasn't quite all this rosy and blah 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 blah. And modeling wasn't that serious before. Yes. Seriously. What story would you like to tell the world? About myself, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. So there you see a girl who is representing her country for the first time. I said earlier on, it's a very beautiful experience, you know, knowing that for the very first time in 65 years we're here today. So I want you, especially for countries that are not a part of this, because I know they are very, they are thinking about this. They want opportunities like this. So I want them to know that time is coming. Yeah. And uh, that's just it. Like, be optimistic and things like that. Be very positive. Thank you. Those are very, very touching words. I'll go to Gian this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gian, how did you find out that Hawa needed help? Uh, well, it didn't happen that way right away. But um, I saw her photo on Facebook through Sash Factor and the Ministry of Tourism of Sierra Leone. Then I wrote a letter through Facebook that I want to sponsor her gown. Then two weeks after, uh, we communicated through text. And then she forwarded her the number of Natasha Beckley, the national director, who, by the way, is former Miss World Sierra Leone, who competed against Gwendolyn Ruey. Yeah. And then we communicated, we talked about the gown, and then it went on for two months. And then I just kind of noticed that, you know, I didn't realize that their organization really started from scratch. And it has to be built from the ground up. Because I kind of noticed that Natasha needed this, needed that, and needed a lot of things. But it didn't dawn into me that maybe it was just, you know, she was just curious to get these things here in Manila, in the Philippines. Until one day I woke up, um, after I submitted my design for her, that Natasha posted the GoFundMe. And I was so worried. I was really anxious, and I couldn't really concentrate doing my workout. And I had to, like... Because it was supposed to be a secret. I was supposed to announce this right now that I'm doing her gown because I want to keep it, you know, under wraps. And I said, I think I really have to like share her story because, you know, she really has to be here. Because for, first, in the first place, my dream wouldn't be realized too. If she couldn't come here, she couldn't wear my gown. And after that, I was so surprised that when I posted the, her GoFundMe page, everybody wanted to help, donated. Some will be donating money, which I need to be, which has to be collected soon for her. Then the designers, my colleagues, some of them really went out of the way to really tell me, hey, I want to dress up Hawa, I want to donate clothes to Hawa. And the national director, Natasha Beckley, was just so happy to know that everybody is backing her up, especially the designers. And yeah, and then I just, I really didn't know that they needed the help until she arrived and she told me everything. You know, I cannot really disclose that, but yeah. you just don't know, Nicole. I mean, we weren't able to sleep because I was crying the entire night and I was bugging her. And I said, oh Lord, what did I, what, what did I get myself into? And I wanted to give up. I couldn't tell her, but I really wanted to give up because it was really stressful. I'm really emotional, I'm so sorry. Oh, just go. But, um, um. It's okay. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> and I'm really inspired by her story. Looking at her, very strong, very um, optimistic, and she has a lot of potential. And, um, and the reason why I'm doing this because um, I came from a very tough situation last year. I was PO Works Pass, Works Back, number one downer. People destroyed me online, and um, this is the reason why I wanted to get back at my feet. And um, I was given Jennifer Hammond the reason why I helped her because I kind of felt that I broke a lot of people's hearts, especially aces and queens. And that's the reason why I'm helping her because 
this has not only changed my life, but it unlocked a lot of good spirits and good values in me that I didn't know I have. And if Pia could read this, I'm really sorry if I doubted you, and I hope that you forgive me, but when you were crowned Binibini Pilipinas Universe, I knew that you were going to be Miss Universe, so I'm really, really sorry, and I hope this would get into you. But Gianna, you told me about this How to Win Miss Universe handbook slash guidelines. <laughs> so can you share with us like some tips? Well, um, there were some insiders who had direct experience at Miss Universe, like the press people and the bloggers. They, when, they found, when they found out and when I shared to them that I'll be uh, with Hawakamara, they said, okay, GM, this is what she needs to do in order to win Miss Universe. So I realized for, upon learning from it that the presentation, your walk, your makeup, your dress, it's just like, it's 50%. Mm -hmm. But I won't give a specific tip, but generally it's about her demeanor, her behavior, how he treats others, how she treats others, how she badly wants it, and how she attacks the interview. Yeah. Really important. So what legacy would you like to leave behind as the first Miss Sierra Leone universe? Like what adventure do you have in mind? The goal that I'm here mm -hmm. is to be in top 15. Because I want it to be really remarkable. It's already um, remarkable for me being the first Miss Universe in my country. You understand? But then it's going to be even more remarkable being in the top 15. So we're really working. What do you think would make you stand out from the 90 girls there? I am really going to pay attention because I know that will help a lot. I'm going to be really strong, trying not to be intimidated. Because you know the thing is, he mentioned that, oh, you know, there are going to be other girls that will want to get. I barely get. First of all, I've never been intimidated in my life. Not wow. in an arrogant form. Yes. You understand? Because I know I have something special. I might not be as more, I might not um, not be as beautiful as some other contestants, but I know I'm powerful because my story is so powerful. If I had to get from there to here, means I'm gonna leave here and go somewhere higher. So I think you're gonna release that power when it comes to the preliminary yeah. interview. It has to be about power. Yeah. So I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. I know much. your journey is going to be beautiful. I <laughs> hope you both really enjoyed this journey and I it pray was. for your happy ending. Thank you.